Okay, and last but certainly not least, Ed Bolin for NBAA. Thank you, Ed. Well, thank you, uh, thank you, Paul and Rolly, and uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, as has been articulated, this is the advocacy panel, uh, and I thought I'd just uh, spend a few minutes talking through kind of the history of, uh, of advocacy, where we are today, and where we're going. You know, I thought. Uh, I thought it was great the way we started and we look back at uh, 100 years, 75 years, 50 years. Uh, all of it suggests our industry has been around for a long time. And it's kind of easy when you've been around for a long time uh, to take a lot of stuff for granted. And as Athar indicated, sometimes we can sometimes feel a little bit insular. Uh, and a little bit misunderstood. Um, and so the role of advocacy is to get out and tell our story, to make sure people realize who we are and why that is important, why that's good. You know, talking about anniversaries, uh, I recall uh, this year is 25 years since our community came together and passed the General Aviation Revitalization Act. Uh, we had a situation where strict liability became the law of the land. Uh, people were uh, suing companies saying that your airplanes are uh, badly built or badly designed, even though the planes were 25, 35, in some cases 50 years old. We had to go out and tell a story. We had to take on the powerful trial lawyers, galvanize our community, and for the first industry ever, we had first time ever we had we had to beat the trial lawyers we were able to do that because the community came together and advocated about the importance of manufacturing jobs in the United States you know fast forward that a little more than 10 years ago a lot of us will remember that November day when three automobile manufacturers flew to Washington DC to ask for a bailout for the automobile companies and business aviation had the worst public image nightmare. At that time, it felt like every politician in Washington was running to the microphone to condemn our industry, say that we were excessive, that we were unnecessary, say we were in the way. And again, our community came together. We told the story about how we create jobs and spur economic development, how we help companies compete, how we do humanitarian work, and slowly, consistently, and that shortly, we move forward. We found friends on Capitol Hill. We created a General Aviation Caucus. And today, those General Aviation Caucuses are the largest caucuses of any kind on Capitol Hill. Today, we have over half the House of Representatives that rather than running to a microphone to condemn our industry, proudly stands up and says, I'm a member of the General Aviation Caucus. I want that to be public. I want the press to know I'm pro-general aviation. I want my constituents to know I'm pro-general aviation. I want anyone who wants to run against me to know I'm for general aviation. We did that because we helped change the perception from unnecessary, excessive in the way to essential. And the challenge is we always have to do that. Now, sometimes we have to do it and advocate who we are to prevent something bad from happening. Uh, more than a year ago, uh, we had the challenge where the airlines wanted to seize control of our air traffic system. They wanted to decide who can fly where, who can fly when, and who pays how much. Our industry came together and said, we want to modernize, not privatize our air traffic control system because it's not true privatization. It's a giveaway of a monopoly air traffic control system to a handful of special interest. And working together, we were able to get that done. We were able to prevent something bad from happening. And now, of course, our challenge that we've proven we can advocate, that we can tell our message on Capitol Hill or to the press, the challenge now is can we tell our story to a new generation deciding what to do with their career? Because the challenge that is clear 
is we need talent. Every industry to be successful needs talent. And can we attract, can we retain talent in our industry? We all know what the competitors are. But I think we've got a story that is every bit as good, in fact, better than virtually every industry that is out there. You know, when you look at what young kids want today, kids want technology. They want to be around technology. And technology is at the heart of everything we're doing. When you get into uh, the aircraft and see the avionics, you see the aeronautics, you see the changes that are going on in the way we communicate, we are very much an industry with technology. But the other things that kids want, they want a community. They want a place to belong. They want people with shared interests. And we are, above all, a community. We started today by remembering someone our community lost. We're celebrating today a community that has been bringing people together around aviation for over 100 years. When you look around this room, you will see some of your most important professional contacts. You'll also see some of your best friends. Together, we are a community, and we can offer that to young people. Young people also want experiences. They want to do things. They want to go places, see things. They want to experience life. Business aviation does that in the United States, and it does it around the world. Most airlines fly to at most 500 airports in the US. After a while, they all begin to look the same. They have the same concessions. They have the same setup. Business aviation will take you to 5,000 airports in the United States and anywhere in the world. People visit places with barbecue and music and get to experience people who will solve challenges together. So we're an industry that offers technology, community, experience. It's also a community that offers purpose. When you think of a time there is a natural disaster in the United States or anywhere around the world, business aviation is there. We help. We're there when there are floods in Houston. We're there when there are wildfires in California. We're there when there are earthquakes in Haiti. Our community responds. Volunteers are time. Volunteers are assets. We work together, and we solve problems. That's a pretty good industry to be in. We also offer growth. People want to grow. They don't want to just be stagnant in their jobs. And we've got an enormous amount of professional development opportunities. We're offering internships, mentorships. We're offering ways for people to constantly enhance their skills. And so when you look at an industry that can offer growth, experiences, technology, community, oh, and yes, sustainability. Sustainability, because the kids want to know what they're doing will not harm the environment. It's a big deal, and we've already talked about that today with sustainable alternative jet fuels. The fact is our industry has been at the lead of a lot of sustainability issues for a long time. It's our industry that came forward with winglets. It's our industry that first adopted GPS. It's our industry where composite technology was really advanced, and it's our industry that is playing the lead on sustainable alternative jet fuels. We've got a lot that can attract a new generation to us. And we've got a great opportunity, and I think Pete articulated it very well. We have as much going on in our industry as perhaps we ever have. In fact, the entire definition of aviation and aerospace is changing right before our eyes. We've got commercial drones. We've got urban air mobility, electric flight, supersonic flight, commercial space. The very definition of aviation is changing before our eyes. It is an exciting time. It's an opportunistic time. It's a time that's filled with challenges and opportunities. And the one thing that we have learned throughout our long history is that when we recognize a challenge, when we come together and we work in a coordinated, communi communicative uh, fashion, we can get a lot accomplished. We can do that today, too. Thank you. Thank you, Ed.
Well, there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of efforts going on uh, to try to make sure that there is uh, there's a way that we can all find a way to operate uh, safely in the same airspace. Uh, and a lot of uh, a lot of work is being done at NASA. A lot of work is being done uh, at with the FAA uh, by industry. Uh, and so we're moving forward right now. As uh, everybody is aware, we've got an ADSB mandate. Uh, that's going to come up uh, at the end of this year uh, that is presumably going to help us track uh, aircraft uh, in, in our airspace but does not really reflect uh, some of the things that are going on uh, with drones at, at the lower level. So we've got to find a way to integrate that. A lot of talk right now about commercial space launch. As you know, uh, today when commercial space launch goes, they basically block off a huge amount of airspace uh, for a significant amount of time. It's a little bit of a problem right now as you've got these things going off uh, fairly irregularly. But if the commercial space industry gets its way, these things will be happening on a near daily basis, in some cases multiple times a day. You can't block off that much. It's, it's not that big a sky. So I think the, uh, the issue has been recognized. Uh, paths forwards are becoming clear uh, and we're trying to find a way to facilitate it. Our challenge, of course, is to make sure that in order for business aviation to thrive, we have to have access to airports and to airspace. You have to be able to use the general aviation aircraft to get your business done, to fly where you need to fly, when you need to fly. Uh, safely, predictably, and affordably. And all of those issues uh, are causing a lot of us uh, to spend a lot of time uh, on committees in Washington and elsewhere to try to make sure that that's possible. And, it, and, it, and it's not a story that uh, is suddenly confronting us and we've never considered, uh, considered a way forward. I think we have a lot to be proud about uh, in how we are constantly evolving in every aspect uh, of flight. You know, we've, we've talked a lot about carbon emissions, but, you know, the stage two aircraft are gone. We're now designing to, uh, to additional stages. Uh, we're an industry that routinely solves hard problems. Uh, so, you know, we've got challenge ahead of us, but we're coming at it in a multitude of ways. And I think that's what, what Pete is saying. We're at the forefront of trying to make the system itself, the air traffic system, function as efficiently, as and effectively as possible to take advantage of the technologies that are on the aircraft, including quieter uh, engines, better aerodynamic designs, now uh, sustainable alternative jet fuel. Uh, there's just a lot that we are doing at every opportunity. We hope we are not in one of these things that, well, we just, we can't tell you why uh, from a decibel level or an opera. We just don't like you and we're going to tax you. Mm -hmm. We want to get to defining where the solutions are and give us an opportunity to achieve them because we have proven we can do hard things and we can do them really well. Uh, and we're willing to constantly improve. It's not, we're never at an end state in aviation. We're always marching forward. Um, and so we're hoping we have an opportunity to dialogue, to get our message out, uh, and to show our commitment to doing hard things well um, is part of the sustainability uh, culture and ethos. Okay, well, thank you very much. So I think the, uh, the model that we have is to, uh, is to focus intently on policymakers and opinion leaders. Uh, it's, a, it's a target audience that has the most ability to impact laws, regulations, and public perception. So a lot of the materials that we do are reflected in that way. But a lot of what we are trying to do as a community is to take the million people who work in our industry and make everyone an advocate so that collectively 
NBAA is not running ads uh, during the Super Bowl uh, or uh, American Idol, but we do have people in every community, at every airport, uh, at every city council, in grocery stores, who understand that this is a great industry and are proud to talk about it and share that with everyone else. And I think that's, uh, that's really the opportunity. We've shown we can do it politically because we saw a call to action to our industry generated uh, in 24 hours over 10,000 emails and phone calls to Capitol Hill. How do we make sure that as we're trying to attract and retain students, uh, the best and brightest into our industry, that we can be everywhere. And I think you see a lot of efforts through airport, uh, airport groups like the Westchester Aviation Association, state groups, the Nebraska Business Aviation Association, regional groups like the Pacific Northwest, all constantly working to say, how do we open up our airports? How do we bring students in? How do we reach mothers and fathers? It is a, it's a grassroots effort, not a targeted media campaign, but it has to take place at a grassroots effort where we don't say, hey, I just want to operate discreetly and not be bothered. It's about everybody constantly going out and saying, do you see how professional this is, how safe this is, how innovative this is, how good this is? And so that's really our effort, is how do we take everyone who flies a humanitarian flight and make sure that somebody else knows about that and tells the story. So I think that's the plan to make everybody in this room, everybody in this industry, uh, an ambassador, a missionary, a, a, whatever it is, uh, but help everybody understand the truly special nature of, of this industry.